Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like two questions in the statement. So first, Simon was on treatment. He yeah. Was, and he it, was on ACT. ACT and another drug. Okay. Yeah, it, it wasn't working. That's it. Um, second question is, I saw that Simon, I guess like wrote that he had advice this black, like do, it was part of the question, do they now currently identify, or I guess like the black or people of color identify as black? Yeah, so, so yeah, that, that's actually really important. Um, so in South Africa, there are uh, white people, black people, and colored people. Um, colored people are basically mixed race people. That includes a lot of Indians in particular. Um, and colored people were afforded certain privileges during apartheid that black people did not have, um, that they couldn't get access to based on certain laws that were passed. Uh, but yes, people do identify as black. Okay, yeah, I was just going to emphasize okay. to yeah. think about, I guess, I don't know, I imagine like being in, in Africa, it's, it's different but also parallel to the 80s here, how a lot of the black gay men didn't want to be involved with the, you know, were forbidden from the white gay spaces here, but there is more of a colonial imperial, also racist maybe thing, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's very, 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 very segregated. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, almost almost no black people go to um, the, the like, Cape, like Cape Town clubs in particular. Um, they're almost exclusively white. Um, yeah, in the back. Um, you mentioned that, um, I guess before you mentioned, this in the movie, that Simon like, came out on this day to his like, anti, of, like straight anti-apartheid colleagues. Um, but that like, during, while he was in prison, he was like, mostly um, became known for his anti-apartheid work. I'm curious, like, if there was any like, like, documentation in the archive about like what the response was to him coming out as gay, oh, yeah. like, amongst the like anti-apartheid team, um, you know, like you know, political peers, and um, you know, yeah, I mean, even he clearly decided to focus on kind of LGBT activism afterwards. I'm curious if his you know LGBT activism was kind of like, swept under the rug a little bit by people in the kind of anti-apartheid. Yeah, there's there's actually a, a lot of documentation on that. There's a few books that talk at length about that. Um, but at the time, they, they were initially a little resistant, not not much. Um, but they would later come to say that it was one of the most important things about their time being in prison that Simon came out. Because it helped them to realize that there was a real diversity in the anti-apartheid activists. That it wasn't just you know straight black men being activists. So I, I think it did have a real big impact and, and people were really supportive because, you know, they 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 were, you know, in prison together for all of those years and they had really been very close. So the fact that um, you know he came out just sort of made him more human, I think. And that, that was a really um, big moment. As I said, um, those many of those people later on um, would fight for including LGBT uh, rights in 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 the first um, you know, the African National Congress, which was the primarily black ruling party, which Nelson Mandela was the president, the first president of. Um, so yeah, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was met pretty positively, surprisingly. I think Simon was surprised about that, too. <clears throat> Thank you very much for your research and your scholarship. I knew Simon. I met him at a very critical moment. Uh, when Nelson Mandela came out of jail, the first speech he gave was in the white church that you could see the island through the window. The church, the church window, you could see where the island where he had been kept in prison. And in that speech, Simon was in sitting one of the first rows with, with, a, with a, a, a lesbian activist. Nelson Mandela pointed him out when he talked about the new constitution. He said that gays and lesbians would be included in the new constitution. It's still the only constitution, I believe, in the world that has those words in it. And he pointed to Simon, and he said because he was a revolutionary. He was a gay man in the ANC. And I sat there filled with the, with the very beginning of the American movement, the Gay Liberation Front, which was not a single issue organization. It was a multiple issue organization. And Simon Nicoli very much represented the politics that came out right after uh, Stonewall and the Gay Liberation Front. 
The, the other thing that I think is important to, to say in this Truvada situation, it was a little unclear. You talked about statistics of sex workers who were HIV positive. And then you talked about Truvada. Yeah. Truvada is, a, is a, an, a serious AIDS drug that is given to people who are sick, either with AIDS or HIV. The, the, the issue of giving Truvada to healthy people is one that should not be slammed into that, that, that discussion. And, um, and is South Africa working on a generic? Because Zaki worked very hard to get the, the generic of AZT. No, they, yeah, it was approved as a generic. Pardon? They, they approved it as a generic drug. They, a, they, they, didn't, they didn't approve it just as the, the brand name. Where is this drug being manufactured? I mean, that's a very big deal because um, India is the primary place that the drug is being manufactured. You know, do you know specifically, if it, because the Indian company that did the AZT generic and the Brazilian company were both shut down. Okay. I, I yeah, can, I, I, can I, this is, I don't know if that's necessarily... But I think the point I'm trying to make is that, that Nicole represented the kind of gay, radical politic that also birthed this movement, in which it wasn't just one issue, it was multiple issues, and he did it as an out black gay man, which was not easy in his own words in the ANC, but he did it, and Mandela honored that. Yes, he did. Yes. I have a question. Like, you talk about not many people go to the Cape Town Club. Can you describe to us just how segregated? I mean, is there are there clubs that maybe were in so-called colored? Where all races meet and mingle, or their colors, or is it where only colors go and only blacks go and only whites go still in South Africa when it comes to gay clubs? I'm thinking of specifically. Yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah. So there's no intermingling. Well, there is. There is. I mean, I think. I think um, just from anecdotal evidence, um, people of color that go there. Um, you know, overhear very racist things that are being said, so they choose not to go there because they don't feel welcome and comfortable there. Um, and that's not to say that everywhere is like that, um, but if you sort of understand um, the way that South African cities are um, organized, uh, Cape Town, for instance, um, you know, has a lot of hills, so there's the City Bowl, which is the center of the city that, you know, most people will go to, and then it wraps around a mountain. Um, and that entire area is almost entirely white people, mm -hmm. by and large, um, because all of, all of the black people and the colored people were forced out of there during apartheid. So they now live in a, an area called the Cape Flats, which is quite removed from the rest of the city. Um, so there isn't a lot of social intermingling uh, between the, the, the different groups just because of the, the geography and, and the, the politics of apartheid. You mentioned the term men must sex with men. I'm just wondering whether uh, there's an attempt by the gay movement at any point to address uh, that population in particular, as there, there was here after a period of time. I mean, there's men who don't self-identify as gay, that might speak of men and women, uh, and need to be reached, at least in terms of AIDS education. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know specifically about the programs, but I, I know that a lot of the, the work that Truman Action Campaign does is not it's not targeted a, a, along like sexual identity. It's mostly about, um, you know, they, they try and go and encourage people just to, to talk about their experiences, whatever they might be, without judgment. Um, and, and not labeling them as, you know, be it, like if you have sex with men, you're obviously gay, or you're, you know, if you have sex with men and women, you're bisexual. They, they try to avoid those labels, I think, because that's really not pr productive, especially um, in townships where, um, you know, Sexuality is still uh, met with a lot of violence in, 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 in some situations. Mm -hmm. I, I just yes. want to make the statement that when it comes to, you know, the, because the apartheid, we're in a post apartheid era, things have, are supposed to have changed, people have to understand that it's not like there's like hundreds of years of history and these people developing a kind of mentality. It's not like the law comes into place and you completely go back and erase everything. So this whole thing with mixing and stuff like that, even though you can now, there's certain barriers that are created that are still around that, you know? Um, and they still open and carry guns all over Johannesburg. 
you know, it's not like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. No, no, Johannesburg is, 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 is violent for anybody that lives there. Yeah. Um, just, just, just to make a note of that. Which is why, um, and also this, the Johannesburg is sort of, it's spread out in a way like LA is spread out. So different neighborhoods are basically cut off uh, by highways. Um, so that makes it especially difficult for different groups of people to intermingle, and it was designed that way. I mean, that this is, you know, that, that's the way that the city has always been designed, and there's a great, um, there is a great change. No, well, no, no, yeah. The township is only one way yeah. to go in and yes. one way to go out. I mean, I mean, I mean, they, yeah, I mean, they, they, they have, they have actually created uh, new uh, uh, bus lines and, and, and other sort of rapid transit stuff that they're trying to develop to integrate um, the neighborhoods. But yeah, it's, it's going to be, um, you know. Do they have gangs and drugs and all that like we have in the ghettos in L.A.? I mean, yeah, I mean, it happens, it happens everywhere. It's like... <laughs> I think Crips of the Blood, they don't have those there, do it's, they? It's, it's one of the most unequal countries in the world, just like the U.S. is one of the most unequal countries in the world. So, you know, we have to understand, yeah, there, there, is, a lot of, um, there is a lot of that kind of violence.